All right, continuing on with the 100 days of 2023 code changes, we're gonna talk about Article 408, switchboards, switch gear, and panel boards. Uh, not a lot to talk about here for the 2023 edition. Uh, over the last six or maybe even nine years, we've, we've done quite a few changes in Article 408, and, and boy, I gotta be honest, I can't think of any of them that I don't like. I, I think Code Making Panel 9 has, has really done some nice code writing in Article 408 in recent years, and this one is, uh, is the same. I, I really like what they did here in 408.9 and in 408.38. So let's go ahead and take a peek and see what they did. Okay, so 408.9, replacement panel boards. This is really an extension of what they did in the 2020 code. Uh, enclosures for replacement panel boards are now addressed, and we made similar changes in 408.38 for new installations as well. You know, it's it's rather surprising just how lacking the requirements for panel board enclosures were up until the 2020 code, and, and really the, the 2023, to be quite frank. Um, what's the requirements for putting a panel board in an enclosure? Uh, well, basically, you, you have to do it, right? <laughs> panel boards have to be in an enclosure, and the enclosure has to have a dead front. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there, there really is no more to it than that. So they made some nice clarifications and some expansions. Let's start with replacement panel boards. So if you take a look at this photograph here, if I had to replace this panel board, now remember, the panel board is the guts. It's not the box, right? What we can see here in the photograph is the cover. We can't see the panel board. This is an enclosed panel board. We can see the enclosure. We can see the cover, but we cannot see the panel board itself. The panel board is the gut. What if I had to replace the guts in this panel board? I think most of us would agree <clears throat> that we would rather not replace the enclosure if we don't have to. So take out the guts, put in new guts, and boy, in a perfect world, that would be a great way to do it. Uh, that's not always feasible, but sometimes we can. So what's the rules if we do it? Well, replacement panel boards are allowed in existing enclosures in accordance with A or B. All right, A, if the panel board is listed for the enclosure in which it's installed, then the panel board's short circuit current rating remains unchanged. All right, so if you're just replacing the exact same guts into the exact same enclosure, well, then, of course, all the ratings are the same as it was before because, you know, you just replace like with like, so nothing changed. But if you put in a panel board in an enclosure that it's not specifically listed for, let's, let's first of all address that very issue. Is it okay to put a panel board in an enclosure that's not listed for the panel board? Yes, absolutely it's okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. Panel boards do not need to be listed at all. Enclosures do not need to be listed at all. <clears throat> now, I think you'd be somewhat foolish to not use a listed panel board. In fact, I don't even know that you could find a panel board that's not listed. Uh, but as far as the code is concerned, you certainly do not need a listed enclosure. But if you're replacing a panel board in an enclosure that's already listed for that panel board, then perfect. Look at the label, the short circuit current rating is the same as it was before. So looking at this photograph here, it says, look, 10,000 RMS symmetrical at 122.40, that is the short circuit current rating. Now the short circuit current rating, of course, is the amount of current that a piece of equipment can deal with without extensive damage. So yeah, you, you hate to sound too melodramatic, but you know, how much current can this panel board withstand without blowing up? I mean, quite frankly, that, that's what we're talking about here. So if the replacement panel board is not listed for the enclosure, <clears throat> then the installation has to be field labeled if the available fault current exceeds 10,000 amps. <clears throat> for lower fault currents, it must be identified for the application. Any listing marks on the enclosure that pertain to a different panel board must be removed. All right, so let me explain what we have here in the photograph. This was at a hotel that I was touring, and <clears throat> in the swimming pool equipment room, they had to replace the panel board. And what had happened is <clears throat> they had used, you know, 50 years ago, quite literally when they, when they built it, they had used regular steel enclosures in the swimming pool equipment room. And with 50 years of being exposed to chlorine and all the pool chemicals, uh, all of the metal in that pool equipment room had just deteriorated and corroded down into just nothing. So 
they had to replace the panel board, and they would have loved to relocate it all together. I mean, they'd rather just move the panel board somewhere that's not in the pool equipment room, but it wasn't in the cards. I mean, th this room was totally concrete, and there was, there was no way they were going to be able to relocate all these circuits. So they had to replace the panel. What they ended up doing is they took a big plastic box, and, and that's what we're looking at around the perimeter here of this installation. That is just a large plastic box that they installed, like a Hoffman enclosure. And they screwed it to the wall, and they took the panel board gut, and they bolted it into the plastic box. Then they put the dead front over the panel board, closed the box, locked it up. Now, is that compliant? Yes, that's absolutely compliant. In fact, it would be unusual, but you could even do that for a new installation. You go to 408.38, like I said, it just says, hey, panels have to be in an enclosure. And then you have to have a dead front on them. So this complies. But here's the issue. If the available fault current is less than 10,000 amps, honestly, that's not very much, okay? 10,000 amps, I mean, that sounds like a lot of current, but under fault conditions, that's not that much. But if I exceed 10,000 amps, the magnetic force of the fault is something that we really have to consider. So is the panel board, I mean, it is, are the bus bars and everything gonna melt at more than 10,000 amps? No. But the issue is, how does the panel board interface with the enclosure? I mean, what if there's so much current that the magnetic effects of that fault rip the panel board out of its mounting? <laughs> I mean, that could certainly happen. So what this rule is saying is, look, number one, the panel board itself has to be rated, it has to have a short circuit current, current rating for whatever the available fault current is. That is always required. That's in 110.9 and 110.10. So it has to be rated for the available fault current. But you know, part of the short circuit current rating of the entire installation is not just the individual components like the panel board, but how it's constructed together. So if the available fault current is more than 10,000 amps, the panel board has to be rated for it. And if the enclosure is not specifically listed for the panel board, then we're gonna have to have somebody come out and take a look at it. We're gonna have to do what? It's gonna have to be field labeled. So we're gonna call Intertech, or we're gonna call UL, or we're gonna call Met Labs or QPS. We're gonna call one of these third party uh, testing facilities and they're gonna come out and they're gonna test it and they're gonna make sure that yes, the panel board itself might not blow up, but we also wanna make sure that it doesn't come loose out of its mountings. So there you go, 408.9. And like I said, similar changes to 408.38 in new construction as well.